Hello! Welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast we're going to make a block-breaking game. So I can move the paddle around with the mouse and keep trying to... Oh! Oh! Oh wow, that's harsh. Anyway, let's start up the Scratch editor by clicking on the Create button. And we won't need this cat sprite, so I can go ahead and right-click on it and select Delete. And instead we're going to paint a new sprite It'll just be a simple black rectangle for the paddle. So I'll click on Convert to Vector, and then select the Square tool. Make sure you have the Filled in Square tool. We don't want to just draw the outline. And then draw a black rectangle, maybe about that big. That seems good. And so we'll want this black paddle not to be directly controlled by the mouse or by the keyboard, but instead just follow the mouse around. So let's go to the brown events section and add the when green flag clicked button. And then we'll add a forever loop from the orange control section. And we'll have this code point the paddle towards the mouse cursor and then follow it around. So from the dark blue motion category, Grab this point towards block, and we'll just say point towards mouse pointer. And then grab a move 10 steps block. So move 10 steps will move the sprite in whatever direction it's currently pointed at. You can see that information by clicking on the info panel for the sprite. Right now it's facing in the 90 degree direction, which is facing off to the right. So when I click the green flag, whoa! Ah! Uh, that paddle is not acting natural. Let's change that around. Well, first of all, we want the paddle to only be right here on the bottom, and we also don't want it to be flipping around all the time. So I'm going to first set the rotation style to this fixed dot style. That way, no matter how the paddle is rotated, it'll only appear right side up. That's not really all that much of an improvement. We need to set it so that the paddle is always down here at the bottom. We'll say around the Y coordinate of negative 140. So grab the set Y block, move that in, we'll change that number to negative 140. So this code will point the sprite towards the mouse pointer and then move in that direction but also, the Y coordinate always gets reset back to negative 140. So the X position will change, but the Y position keeps the paddle down at the bottom. That's nice. And also, we want the paddle to start off in the same location at the start of the game each time. So I'll grab this go to X, Y block and put that right underneath when the green flag is clicked, but outside of the forever loop. And we'll say it always starts off at 130. Next we'll need a ball, so I'll close this and click on the Choose Sprite from Library. So we can go to the Things category and find that tennis ball. Here we go, this looks good. So the tennis ball code, basically we'll just have it start bouncing around the walls of the stage. So to program that, we'll need a when green flag clicked and a forever loop. And we'll have the ball constantly moving forward 10 steps. And then we'll grab this special block down here that says if on edge bounce. So that if the sprite is ever on the edge of the stage, it'll change its direction in a bouncing like motion. We'll go ahead and click the green flag. Oh, that's not too helpful. We don't want the ball just to go back and forth like that. It's doing that because it's just facing left and then right. So we should have this tennis ball start off. First we'll have it start off at the origin of x0 and y0. And then we'll also have it start off pointing in a certain direction. So grab the point and direction block and change this to 135. That's pretty good. So the ball starts off pointing in that down right direction, and now it just bounces around the walls of the screen. But you notice it's not actually bouncing off the paddle because we haven't added any code to make it do that yet. Well, first I'll rename this sprite to Paddle. 
I need to add some code where if the paddle is touching the tennis ball, it will broadcast a message to all the sprites telling the tennis ball to bounce. So we can do that by going first to control to grab an if block. Then in the light blue sensing category, we'll grab this touching block and put it in the ifs condition socket. And click on this black triangle to set it to tennis ball. So if the paddle sprite is touching the tennis ball, then what we want to do is a certain kind of block from the brown events category called broadcast. And this will broadcast a message to all the sprites on the stage. I'll click on the black triangle and we'll say new message and we'll call this message bounce. And so broadcasting messages can cause other sprites to start doing things. So I'll show you what I mean. Click on the tennis balls code and then grab this when I receive bounce. So this code will, underneath this block, will execute whenever this sprite receives the bounce message. So if any other sprite broadcasts the bounce message, the code under here will be executed. What we want this to do is change the direction of this sprite. So we'll do a little bit of math here. The new direction of the sprite should be 180 minus the current direction. In the dark blue motion category, we can find this direction bubble. And then I'll go ahead and move 10 steps in that new direction. So now when the ball hits the paddle, the paddle will broadcast the bounce message. And let's say the direction of the ball is negative 135. That means it's going this down left direction. The new direction will be 180 minus negative 135. That adds up to 215 degrees, which is the same as negative 45 degrees. And if the ball was moving in the 135 degrees, 180 minus 135 is 45 degrees, which is in the upper right direction, so the ball will bounce this way. Let's try this out. Click on the green flag and test your program. That's pretty good. Although so far, nothing happens when the ball gets past the paddle. We should have the game end if the ball gets past the paddle, and also go ahead and insult the player while we're at it. So I'm going to create a brand new sprite by painting a new one. I'll click on the convert to vector first, and then set the text tool. We'll choose a nice angry red font that says, game over. You lose, loser. Loser mc loser pants. That's pretty good. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. Get it right in their face. So this text is a sprite, just like the paddle and just like the tennis ball. And we can add code to it. So let's set the tennis ball right here to have code that detects if it gets its Y position less than negative 140, which means it'll be past the paddle. So inside the forever loop, we'll add an if block. And this will say if the Y position is less than negative 140. So we need this less than block. We'll go to the motion category and grab that y position bubble. And if position if y position is less than negative 140, we'll have it broadcast a game over message. So new message, game over. So our game over sprite, I'll just rename it that. Game over sprite. Our game over sprite will need to do two things. First, at the very start of the program, we don't want it to say game over. So we'll go to the looks category and grab this hide block and that'll make the sprite invisible. And then if we go back to the brown events category, we'll grab that when I receive message block and the message it will receive is game over. And when that happens, we want the game over text to show itself. So go back to the purple looks category and grab that show block. This will make the text visible again. And then since the game is over at this point, 
we'll want to stop the program. So go to the orange control section and grab this stop all block. That'll stop all of the scripts from running. So let's test this out. Bounce, and then it gets past me. Oh, game over. So next, let's add a new variable. Go to the orange data section. We'll make a variable that keeps track of the score. So click on make a variable and type score for the variable name and just leave it as for all sprites. The score will display itself in the upper left corner right here. We should also add a you win McWinnie pants type message. So we'll create a new sprite that says, well, we'll convert it to vector mode then add the text tool, you win. I think that McWinnie pants thing might be getting a little carried away. We'll just have it say, you win. Simple statement, you are the winner. Move that right here to the center. And so we'll have it so that you get one point for each of the blocks that you break, and there will be 12 blocks. So once the score reaches 12, this you win sprite will know that it should make itself appear. But first, at the very beginning of the game, we want it to hide itself. And then, also at the very start of the program, reset the score back to zero. And now we'll go to the orange control section. Let's just have this sprite wait around and do nothing until the score variable equals 12. So I'm going to go to the green operator section to get the equal sign. Go to the data section to get that score variable. And so wait until the score is equal to 12. And once that happens, we know that the player has won. So we'll go to the purple look section and then have the sprite show itself. And then since the player has won, we'll go ahead and stop the program with this stop all block. So now let's start creating those blocks. Go ahead and click on choose sprite from library. I'm going to go to the things category, and this button 3 sprite looks pretty blocky. We can use that. And that's a little big, so we'll shrink that down some. So all these blocks do are just sit around until the tennis ball hits them, at which point they'll disappear and then add one point to the score. So that's pretty simple to program. Let's go to the events category and grab that when green flag clicked. And then get a forever loop. And all they do is check if they're being touched by the tennis ball. So grab this if block. And under the light blue sensing category, grab this touching block. And say if touching tennis ball. So in that case, we want the tennis ball to start bouncing off the block once it hits it. So we'll have the we'll have the block sprite broadcast that bounce message and then hide itself. And finally, change the score by one. Button three isn't that good of a name for this. We'll just rename this to block. So we can test this out. Oh, that's pretty good. And stop the program. Well, there's one small problem though. The block is now hidden, so we actually need to have it show itself at the very start of the game. Let's go to the purple look section, grab that show. And in fact, it's kind of annoying to not have it visible while we're editing it, so I'm going to add some little debugging code right here. Go to the brown events section and grab that when space key pressed. And we'll just have it so that whenever the space key is pressed, we'll reshow the block. So now I can press the space key, make the block start up all over again. And that looks sort of unglamorous for the block to just disappear. Let's add some fancy animations to that. Let's go to the control section and grab this repeat block. And the animation will just be a whole bunch of changing the looks of the block. So in the looks section, we'll go to this change color effect by 25, add that block in there. We'll grab another one of those. We'll change the ghost effect by four. And that'll make the block slowly start to fade away like a ghost. And then we'll have it shrink down also. So grab this change size by 
and we'll make it a negative number so that it shrinks down. And we'll also have it spin around some. So go to the motion category and grab this turn 15 degrees block. So this repeat block will do all of the blocks inside of itself 10 times. It's kind of like the forever loop, except it doesn't loop forever. It just loops 10 times only. We'll put this right in there. Now the effects will reset themselves every time we start the green flag. So these effects will reset themselves whenever we click on the green flag, but the size and the pointed direction will stay the same. So we need to add code at the very beginning of the program that resets them back to their normal values. So go to the look section, and grab this set size, put that there at the top. Go ahead and add that to our debugging code also, so that resets itself back to normal. And then grab that point and direction code and add that to the start also, and also to the debugging part. So now you can see, oh, that looks way fancier than just disappearing. I can press the space key to make it reappear and be set back to normal. So now at this point, we just have to duplicate this block sprite uh, about 11 more times so that we have 12 blocks total. So right click on it and select duplicate, and right click on it and select duplicate, and duplicate, and duplicate, and just keep making more and more of them. You'll notice each of these duplicate blocks have the exact same code as the original one. That's why we went ahead and finished this entire sprites code first and then duplicated it. That way we wouldn't have to add it to all of the individual sprites later on. All right, so we have 12 blocks. We'll just line them up like this. They don't have to be in order or even perfectly aligned. We can have this set any way we want. Okay, that should be it. Let's test this game out. Click on the green flag. And almost gonna get it. Stay on target. Yeah, you win. McWinnie Pants. All right, that was a lot of fun. So in this screencast, we learned all about having different sprites broadcast messages and having other sprites do things when they receive that message. We also added some text that hides itself at the very beginning of the game and then later shows itself when a certain condition happens. For the game over, it's uh, when it receives the game over broadcast, and for you win, it'll wait until the score is equal to 12 before it shows itself. We also learned that we can easily duplicate sprites so that we can have tons of the exact same sprite with the exact same code. It's a lot like duplicating the code blocks, except we're also duplicating the sprite itself. So I hope you found the screencast helpful. I'm Al Swigert, and thanks for watching.